once again time for us to talk about some of our favorite character actors. Yes! Recently I saw The In-Laws in Full for the first time, and I didn't know that James Hong was in it. He's probably best known for Big Trouble in Little China, but he's been doing movies since the 70s. And most people don't know, he's also from Minnesota. My next pick is an actor you're probably not familiar with. His name is Glenn Fleshler. I first saw him on the show Boardwalk Empire playing egotistical bootlegger George Remus. And he also played the super scary Errol Childress on the first season of True Detective. He's done a lot of TV. He hasn't done a lot of movies, but I bet that's going to change. Is there a way we can wrap this up? There's no possible way to wrap this up. Uh... And now it's time for unboxing. Unboxing. Where we open the contents of our mailbag, or unbox, if you will. And we thank our donors. People who went to WelcomeToTheBasementShow.com and contributed. Donors such as Andrew, Melanie, Brian, Alexander, Michael, Isabel, Lindsay, David, Elizabeth, Thomas, Isaac, Eric, Stephanie, and Kyle. Thank you all. Posted cards. This is from Sean Henry. A little bit of Star Wars by way of Magritte. To see ne pas un rune. He says, September's episodes have been particularly good. Ha, huh, well, take that, October. This is from Paul and Devin, who say, if you ever swim by Oklahoma, we will buy Matt a pint and Craig a glass of the red stuff. All right. Paint. This is from Pip, who we heard from last time, and they are studying in Nottingham, England. They're originally from Australia. And this is a picture that Pip took while in England and really? made it into a postcard. Oh, they have deer just laying around in England? That's crazy. It's crazy, Craig says, all the time. Here's a couple of postcards that uh, recall our first season of this show. John from San Antonio says, Your Top Gun episode is my favorite. Hey, that's one of my favorites too. And Matt from Cedar Rapids simply says, Dick Laurent is dead. <sighs> and so is that postcard. I was going to be five for five. Already sounds whimsical. Yes. Come in, Miss uh, uh, Doctor Tillinghast. That jacket is positively dreadful. Don't worry, lady. My jacket doesn't fit either. How about a little smooch for Bonzo, huh, Toots? I've lined this crib with comfortable plastic bags for Bonzo. My people are farmers up north. Papa wasn't too happy about my going off to work. Changing Bonzo's diapers must be horrifying. <laughs> Peter goes to the store and buys some baby food for the monkey. This is where they'd meet up on Double Indemnity. <laughs> <laughs> He's in special ops. <laughs> Bonzo, get down! Bonzo, get down was also what Jimmy Page and Robert Plant would say in the studio. You say a monkey? Would one of you public servants come up and help the young lady down? If only fire departments were privatized, they would do their job better. <laughs> Causal relations between a self-conserving system and its environment are essentially reciprocal and cyclical in nature. In conclusion, I am 35 years old. Vonzo, polite little boys, do not sit on the table. Now get back in your chair. I tell this to Cecil two or three times a day. <laughs> the dean wants me? No, but little chicken does. I beg your pardon? Little Chicken is a pimp from downtown. He <laughs> says he needs to talk to you about something. Soon he would find his new mama and papa, Big Mama Thornton and Papa Legba. It's nothing but rock and roll and voodoo rituals for him for the rest of his life. Wait a minute. We could give Bonzo cigars. It's always funny when a, when a monkey smokes. Here's an idea for you, Peter. Wait until the store opens, go to the store with the stolen merchandise, and say, my monkey took this. People like to send me records, and I listen to some of them. First up, we've got the Car Wash soundtrack. All of this music is by the band Rose Royce, and there's four sides of music here. If you ever thought Rose Royce only did the song Car Wash, they've got two full albums of music here. Did they do the soundtrack, just the entire background music for the entire thing, or I is that all? I think so. Yeah? I'd have to watch it again to see if it's just kind of playing in the background like American Graffiti. I think it is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but this is uh, some good funky stuff. Next up, we've got Wild Billy Childish. I just listened to this last night, and if you like greasy punk rock music, this is easy listening for you. It's uh, nice and crunchy and uh, British, and it's good stuff. One thing I am disappointed is this thing has barely been open at all, and already the jacket is falling apart. Bad glue. Damaged goods records. Oh. Well played. And Thomas Epley, who sends me most of my records, he recently said on Facebook, Hey, I want to know which records you don't like. Well, I've got one right here, and it is Bikini Kill. Oh! I know. 
Now, I like angry girl bands. I'm a big fan of Helium and Huggy Bear, Sleater Kinney. But this one, there's a lot of piss and vinegar and not a lot of musicianship. Punk rock music is great, but when it's just like, it's just not very interesting. Bikini Kill, I will give this to Craig. Thanks, Miss Hannum. I appreciate you. And you too, Epley. You too, Epley. You too. Epley, you no good mug. Questions. I figured out one that I can answer. Connor James Hawkins asks, What would you consider the most overrated movie of all time? Last year at Marion Bad. Alan Rene, French movie. If you want to sound smart, you say you like it. Nobody really likes this movie. The movie that leaps to mind is Avatar, but I think the general consensus is that Avatar is overrated, so I don't think that that's a very good answer. And also, who thinks about Avatar nowadays? Yeah. And now, the Zatoichi Report. My quest to watch all 25 Zatoichi sequels in 2016 continues. You're at 21 now? I am at 22 now. 22. Zatoichi meets the one-armed swordsman. That's right. A swordsman has come over from China to stir things up in feudal Japan. And guess what? He's only got one arm. Coming off of Zatoichi Goes to the Fire Festival, which is my favorite of the series so far, this one is a bit of a letdown. Wong Kong, who is the one-armed swordsman, is not as convincing on camera of being a badass as Zatoichi is. Like, there's a lot of camera tricks to show him doing extraordinary things, whereas uh, Shintaro Katsu just does them. There's some nice humor with the Japanese-Chinese culture clash, not all of which I get, because I'm not either of those things, but that's about it. We just had a presidential election a week or so ago, got a brand new president, and so I have a little poem here that is about a president. It is inspired by a viewing of the Robert Altman film Secret Honor, which is about Richard Nixon. And it is entitled Millhouse Rex. The deposed president spits and froths like a dog, his nightly oratorio of bitter memory resounding off of the walls. Each grunt and expletive possessed of high Shakespearean pathos. Hamlet via Caliban. The reels of the tape recorder spin, recording, erased, re-recorded. His own sweaty memory archive, unerasable, and on a constant loop. Mother, tell me who I am. Tell me what to do, Mama. To the end, even after we've pressed our thumb into the wet clay of history, in the secret parts of us we are always still little boys, turning the pages of the family Bible with our little fingers and remembering. As daylight nears, the whiskey bottle almost empty, the barking and the growling subside, replaced by a boy's voice. Mother, it's me, your little dog. Arf. Nixon. Let's open them packages. I'll take the white envelope. I'll take the white envelope. I believe that was from someone who said we'd never hear from him again. Uh, From Vincent San Marcos, he told us on Facebook that he found some more postcards and he's sending us more. This is from Alexander in Andover. Oh, this is really hard to open. Well, this is really easy to open. Done. <laughs> Don't rush me. Look at all these postcards. A grouse, bunch of castles, and Ooh. some flowers, and a note. As I found a bunch of cards I missed the first time, a lot more coming in your mailbox. Ooh. Your pal, Vinny. Alexander from Andover, Massachusetts, gives us a couple of devotees. One is Africa Screams with Abbott and Costello. Oh, and the other, oh, this one is a classic. The Flying Deuces with Laurel and Hardy. Laurel and Hardy? Yes. And why don't you hand me that last package? Oh. This feels too light to be a record. Hmm. Now I know why it's too light, because it's a 45. Ooh. Buck Owens. My heart skips a beat and close up the honky tonks. That's great. I love Buck Owens. Yeah. And his buckaroos. Thomas Alva Epley, and he says, straight out of Bakersfield from his very limited edition. Oh, this is from Record Store Day, 2011. That was back before I started going to Record Store Day. Or maybe that was the first one I ever went to. I don't know. You've been going a long time. Yeah. I'm going to crank my turntable up to 45 RPM and spin this. That's what I'm going to do. God damn it. You're not going to stop me. You're not going to tell me how to raise my baby. Unboxing is now concluded, and we had a good time, and we hope you had a good time. And you can see the regular episode of Welcome to the Basement coming out this Friday. Goodbye. It's very gentlemanly of you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I am, as soon as I get there. Get where? I'm not going to tell you. Because if you don't know, then no one can worm it out of you. Just like what we're going to do in Nicaragua. Peter, there's something very odd going on in this house. Oh, that line is in every kooky movie. Yep. There's something very strange going on around here.